Hello everyone, it's Farker here, and in this video I'm going to cover update 14 for Sons of the Forest. This one's a pretty spicy one. Now this one doesn't really have many spoilers, I don't think, so I'm just going to include everything. There's minor ones, but it was just too difficult to try and put them at the end, so apologies in advance. Let's get into it. The first addition is that they've added numerous amounts of different types of arrows. You can now make fire arrows, shock arrows, poison arrows, and explosive arrows. And you can do this with all three types of arrow. The 3D printed arrow, crafted arrow, and the carbon fiber arrow. So technically it adds another 12 types of arrow, but not really at the same time. How it works is that you can carry 20 of each arrow, and you gotta look in both containers to see how many you're carrying. And the way it works is that you can basically carry as many as you want of any type of arrow as long as it's 20. So you can have five fire arrows, five shock arrows, five poison arrows, and five explosive arrows, for example. I'm going to cover each one on its own. Now the fire arrow is quite easy to make. It's just cloth and booze. Cloth is a little bit harder to get. Booze is just everywhere. You don't have much use for it. Now these are a lot better than what they were in the forest. They light almost in half the time, which is strange for a game that's obsessed with animations. It actually lights a lot faster than the forest does. It cannot be lit with a wall torch or anything like that yet. I'm sure they'll add that. They did in the forest. So the arrows do the standard arrow damage type and then whatever's added on, say poison damage, fire damage, etc. With fire arrows, they are destroyed after hitting the enemy because they burn. Makes sense. I didn't test other types of arrow, only the crafted arrow. So I could be wrong on that. Depending on the enemy, fire affects them differently. They can be paralyzed. So they stand there screaming, for example. But generally a fire arrow will kill most normal cannibals in one. It'll put them on the ground. You've just got to finish them off. You can use the fire arrow on the body to turn the body into bones which is kind of useful. The next arrows are poison arrows, which use Amanita mushrooms and snowberries. Also, all these arrows have their own animation, which is kind of cool. They actually made animations for these. Now, poison arrows were in the forest. They work different in this game. In this game, they do a damage over time, but they don't slow them down. You can see on the screen now the type of damage it does over time. This is on hard survival, so it's going to be a lot lower, most likely than normal. It isn't very high. Most of the time, free damage. Snowberries are completely useless in this game. However, Amanita mushrooms can be used in the stew recipe, the mushroom one, which is actually kind of useful, but still it's very cheap to make. In most cases with all these arrows, you should be making them if you maxed out on ingredients. The damage over time lasts about 20 seconds, I believe. The next arrows are the shock arrows, and the shock arrows are actually kind of cool, but they're very expensive to make. They require wire and a circuit board, which is fine. That's not that rare. The thing is they cost two batteries though. In my season two playthrough, I'm having trouble getting batteries. There's only one spot that I know that they respawn in. So on hard survival, there's quite a battery shortage. Or if you've got containers turned off. If you've got containers turned on, this isn't going to affect you. I do think at night's going to add some more battery spawn locations though. When you hit a cannibal with this arrow, it stuns them and they fall down. Kind of cool. And then you could just wail on them with a melee weapon. You'll finish them off. They don't work as well on mutants, but they're still good. So if you hit, say, a fingers, you should be able to hit him and kill him with a melee weapon before he comes back to normal. Same with the twins. Though armsies, it barely did anything. It stunned him for about two seconds and he was back to normal. The next arrows are the explosive arrows. Now these also require two batteries, a packet of C4, circuit board, and wire. It's a very similar recipe to the shock ones. I don't like that they include batteries, but yeah. Now this one doesn't explode on impact, it explodes about a second or two after they hit the target. And I'm assuming it would explode them into pieces, but I have the sensor mod on because YouTube is the way it is. But it is pretty cool. There is a delay and you do not want to be using this near your structures because the area of effect will damage your structures. I do like that they're starting to use C4 bricks for other things and the watches too, which we'll get to. There was a lot of items that only had one use. I'm glad they're starting to fix that up. That's it for the arrows. Now we're going to move on to the new buildings and most of these are blueprints that you've got to find. So what I'm going to do is just showcase what the buildings all are and then show you where you find the blueprints. I thought that was a better way of doing it. So first is the grind trap and this is probably the most entertaining of the new traps. It even has a Knight V in it, and the player bends logs as well, which is kind of interesting. The amount of strength required to do that would be quite substantial. And basically when an enemy gets caught in it, they get spun around. Now, as I mentioned before, I've got the sensor mod on. I think if I didn't have that on, enemies would be getting ripped to pieces. I really like this trap, it's really funny. <laughs> it's very expensive to make. And the Catabool's animations were the best so far. Fingers didn't really get thrown around in it, but he still died. I did put a normal mutant in it and I think it bugged out. It looked like it was doing cartwheels falling away. I think that's just a bug they're going to have to fix. 
<laughs> it was quite funny though. And Armzy, however, he got one shot by this thing and he has 400 health. So this thing probably does about 600 damage, really high. Now, as with all traps, I believe the player can't trigger them, but you can walk into them after the fact. And if you walk into it, you can get damaged. Doesn't throw you around in it though. It will kill you, but. The next one is a spin trap. This one's self-powered. And all of these traps are self-powered, by the way. You just gotta reset them. This one, once triggered, just spins around and smashes them in the head a lot of times. If it is hitting him in the head, say cannibal height, it's gonna do a lot more damage. Uh, mutants are a bit taller, so they might avoid the head damage. Then this one just keeps spinning for about five to 10 seconds. If you can position this one in a corridor or somewhere where it can trap them and they're not bouncing away from the trap, this thing's gonna be pretty potent. I just need to make one of these at a ground level so they can kill babies, then I'll be happy. But yes, I found that it one shot the cannibals, even a fingers, which has got 200 health. Just quickly, after the last update, they added a hot fix that increased the damage of the Uber trap. This was another trap that I added. It seems to work a bit better now. The damage was pretty lame before. The next one is a spear thrower trap. And this is probably the most interesting one of the traps, I believe. It's the one that's gonna require the most strategy and it is the only one that the player can activate themselves. So it works like a cannon. The problem is though, you cannot aim this trap. I think where this would be most effective is if you had a corridor of death or something like that, where if they ran down, but you can shoot them with it. To complement this addition, they've added a spear holder to the game, but I'll get to that shortly. With these three traps added, I've been thinking that the game's getting a bit of an RTS vibe, a real-time strategy vibe, where you've got to create combinations of things to be effective. There is so many more traps in this game compared to the forest. They're really going ham on base defense. I really hope we get more like this where the player has an active role in using the trap. More of a turret even. It'd be cool to see this structure in a turret that you could man and aim and shoot. That would be really cool. We'll just have to wait and see though. It's a good start though. The next two are still blueprints that you gotta find, but they're not traps. The first one is the spotlight and this one is probably the most disappointing addition. This is basically just a light and it doesn't really have a spotlight effect. It doesn't shoot out that far. From my experience in this game, flashlights and LED, the bulbs and all that, light bulbs, all of it, it's so weak that it's just, I don't even know if they're really worth using. Fire torches in that seem more effective. They use a lot of sticks and you got to link them up to a solar panel and battery, etc. Yeah, based on what I've seen of the forest, I don't see the lights been improved like the flashlight or anything. Flashlight should stay the way it is, but these need improvement. They need at least double the amount of light. Or if it's a spotlight, it should be shooting light out in a direction, not just in a small circle around it. Unless they're just having trouble with getting the lighting effects work. I don't know. It's just disappointing. I built a cross next to it and it just lit up heaps more. Obviously it's got a lot more bulbs, but in the same amount of light in an area of effect, what it feels like anyway. The next one is a clock. And as you can imagine in a typical end night style, it uses hands on it <laughs> to tell the time. And this does work, it's functional. If you change the time using console commands, the hands move. Interesting note is that time moves a lot faster at night, which basically means that if you play during the night, your stats are gonna drop a lot faster. You're gonna have to eat more, drink more, that sort of stuff. This was the same in the forest. The forest was exactly like this too. Never figured out why. Maybe I should ask. You can place it on the wall or on the ground. I placed it on the ground and placed sticks next to it. The sticks that you can place in a fire are much bigger than them. I just thought it was interesting. You can still check your time on the GPS or you can use this. I'm actually hoping they come out with a variant that just uses bones instead of the hands. That's just something I would like to see. Gore has never been the appeal for me to play these games. I suppose it is the developer's vision. The next is the double bed. And this is actually kind of cool. For once, we actually have a bed that actually looks comfy to sleep on. Even the forest normal bed didn't look that good. I think it had three rabbit furs on it. And it actually has pillows on this one. I'm not sure if it affects the quality of sleep because there is such a thing as a comfort rating. Also note that this is a double bed, which means that two people can sleep in it at once, which means that you can share the bed with either Calvin or Virginia. Though you can't tell any of them to get in the bed, they'll just randomly hop into the bed. You can't pick up this bed either. It just breaks apart. And there's a shadow problem with it too. I don't know what this is about. I think it's just a bug. Something to do with the bed head. They could just get rid of the bed head. The next addition is the one I mentioned before, the spear holder. I don't know how many spears it holds. I got Calvin to fill it up and he put like 20 in there, but it doesn't look like it has 20 spots in there. I think it looks like it has 10. Still a cool addition. You'd want to place these near the spear thrower trap. Now we're getting into the blueprints and that sort of stuff. 
all these blueprints cannot be added through console commands. You have to find them all. Now, I've put them all on the screen here. You don't have to copy these. These are going to be in the description of the video. These are all the blueprints that are currently in the game that you can find. So if you just want to find them this way, you can. To use these, type in cheat stick in the game. Just type it in cheat stick, one word, and then press F1 and then you type in these commands. Just copy and paste them from the description if you want to do it. I just thought some of you might find this helpful. Now the first blueprint can be found at one of the fishing villages. It's a grind trap blueprint. And also this is where the second to last question mark items is. They're going to add one more then you're going to be able to complete it. And we'll find out what it actually does. That will probably be in the next update. Now this one's actually underneath the floorboards of the house and it leads down into a cave. Now this is the first proper cave that I've seen where I think it might be viable to build in. I added in logs and you can actually build down here. This could be an interesting base idea. How well it will work, I don't know. But there's a lot of new props like this baker's flower. Keep seeing this everywhere. Just so you know, there's a lot of new story items too. The story papers. I'm not going to cover them too much because they do have a lot more spoilers. As you go down into the cave though, you'll get a jump scare by two skeletons dropping in front of you. There's a lot of items down in here. A lot of boards you got to break down and ropes you got to climb down. And then eventually you'll get to the spot. There's a cup. There's a few skeletons standing up covered in solid which is interesting. And that's where the piece of that artifact is. And if you turn around, there's a waterfall. And underneath the waterfall is where the blueprint is for the grind trap. The next one is the spin trap blueprint. I'm just showing on the GPS map where these things are. And also you can use the coordinates in the description as mentioned. This one is also in fishing huts on the table. Next is a spear thrower blueprint. This is in one of the ice caves in the mountains. It's one where there's a glider next to it. These caves have all been extended. If you go down inside it, you'll find all a bunch of spears and the blueprint thing will be underneath it. A whole bunch of items too. The next blueprint is a spotlight that can also be found in fishing huts. Now there's quite a lot of fishing huts. These aren't the same ones, just so you know. And then they've added more, which I'll get to. Also in the hut over, there's a story item. I think they're up to 40 pages of story items now. And the next one is near the center of the map, near the ice lake. There's an ice cave down near there. More story items inside. Now inside it's a cave space you can crawl down to. And this one leads to the clock. And I think I mentioned that. I'm already starting to lose my voice. There's no enemies in any of these blueprint caves from what I can tell. So that's where you can find all the blueprints. Are any of them essential? No, but they are kind of cool. Now we're getting away from blueprints and arrows. We're moving on to the new cannibal type called Igor. Now Igor is a cannibal that wears a hat or a helmet that's got sticks poking out of it. And he is pretty much like the fat man from the forest. He will charge at you and knock you down. He does a little charge up animation, then he runs at you. You can avoid his attack by running around in circles and he will keep running too. Unfortunately, he doesn't get puffed out after chasing you, which I thought was a little bit odd. You'd think he'd be puffed out after all that charging. Because he charges, he's probably best to be dealt with with range as he's charging towards you because it's going to be very easy to hit him. Does a lot of damage though, he doesn't mess around. As mentioned many times in my videos, armor is pretty useless in this game. It really is. If you don't believe me, go back to the forest and get hit by enemies in there. Holy crap. The next addition is you can now view all the notes you find around the world via the group of pages item in the inventory and they've added new story pickups, which I mentioned before. But scrolling through this pile, you'll see there's new ones. I used to have it in the survival guide in the forest. Didn't work that well back then. I think this is probably a better way of doing it. Sorry if any of these are spoilers. It's to give you an example of what they've done. Now this is just a small segment to let you know of the building fixes. These ones are always important, but you never know what they're actually going to fix because of the way they're worded. And I've said this before, but I don't blame End Knight for this. Just the way the building system is, is quite complicated. Using the terms of beam and deck and rail and pillar and all that sort of stuff. Because there's quite a few of them, I thought I'd listen and just acknowledge that these are quite difficult to understand, but I don't think they're ever going to be able to get around that. Now, this one's a bit interesting. They've added a whole bunch of new details, pickups, and environment details to the world, but they didn't actually specify what a lot of this was. I found a lot of it throughout the world, and it's quite interesting. They added a lot, and it's surprising that they didn't break it down. So the hot springs in that have uh, deceased female persons there who are probably bathing in the waters. I don't know about these springs and that sort of stuff. If this is what people actually do, this is not something we have in Australia because we're not on a plate. But yeah, they've added a whole bunch of items to these areas too. So like little camps, you can hit these places up for items. Now there is three locations. Only two of them have had stuff added to them. Just so you know, with these hot springs, the water never freezes over and you can use it for drinking and cooking, that sort of stuff. It's very good. 
The next one is that they've added like effigy things. I don't know what these are, but it's cool. Adds more immersion. It doesn't look very immersive here because I've taken out all the trees on this save to make it easy to find things. But they added other things like a little camp here. I don't remember this ever being here. The next one is that they added a cabin near the frozen lake in the middle of the map. It's like a fishing cabin. On the lake itself, there's canoes and there's three ropes there that would probably respawn. So this would be a good spot to hit up. I don't know why there's canoes out here if this lake is always frozen. But there is a story item on the wall. Most of these items would respawn though. And the last one which is probably the most interesting, but I can't actually show it because of what's inside the yacht. But they've added a new yacht on the other side of the map and there's no items in it, but it is absolutely filled with gore. Something bad happened inside. And they're all new gore props too. It's because the sensor mod didn't get rid of any of it. So I can't really show you inside, but it is pretty bad inside. I don't recommend going to visit yet because there's no items there. It's just a place of interest at this point. Unless you want to build a base around it to say, hey, look, I've got a yacht. It's good to see they're filling out the map, though. I really like that. They've still got a long way to go, though. I honestly think they're only about 30% of the way. They've got heaps of work to do. But it felt like they were spending too much time underground in caves. Feels like they're moving above ground now, which is good. That's where most supplies are spending their time. They've added a new crafting animation for crafting the GPS trackers. I'm just going to show it. It's not as fancy as you think it would be. It's still better than him mixing it together like it's an energy mix, for example. Now, this one's interesting as well. Some vegetation added to cliff and mountain meshes. What this means is that they've added a lot of bushes and stuff. Now, this map I have here is a save game I have that I clear all the trees regularly. So if there's any changes, I can see where the changes are happening. And there's a lot of these, which means that there's a good chance that your base is going to have bushes in it that weren't there before, because it happened to me as well. Once you remove the bush, it should be fine. It won't regrow. But just let you know, if you do see bushes regrowing in your base, this is probably because of this change. It's an immersion thing. It's good. My base in season two got one bush inside the house and quite a few out the front. So yeah. Now this one's a bit odd of the way I've set it up, but they've extended and detailed the three ice caves, which I showed the other two. I'm going to show that the last one, which is one near the frozen winter spawn place where the helicopter crashes in the snow. This has had an extension done to it. You can climb down inside it. It's actually quite hidden away. Thing is, there's no items or anything of value down here except for one story item. It felt like they've started, but they hadn't finished yet, so they've walled it off. I have to keep an eye on this one in the next update. The next addition is that they've added new draped tar pickups on some stumps and skeletons in the world. Now, I only found two of these, and the reason I'm highlighting this one because it doesn't seem that important is that it's just an immersion thing I like how they're filling out the world I like these kind of updates I think they're very important and just so they know with if they're watching this the one on the tree stump it's see-through at one point it's glitched out I think that was just an oversight now they mentioned that they added various details to many of the cannibal villages I went flying around and looking at a whole bunch of them and I didn't see any changes at all. There are so many that it could be easy to mistake any of them, but I couldn't tell. This is completely off topic from the update, but I'm hoping this becomes a thing. I can't see a reason why they won't add this, but we know Calvin can pick up logs and build things. He just can't place blueprints. So why don't they make cannibals build things? I'm very curious about that because they can actually pick up sticks and logs and that. They can be modded in to do that. I think it's going to happen. I hope it happens because if it does, if they had catapults to the game, they could add catapults at the front of your base and start attacking you and building their own villages. It'd be crazy immersive. I don't think we've seen anything like that in a survival game before. But there's no reason why they can't do it. So they could have an architect cannibal, the one that builds things, and he steals the mining helmets and walks around with them. He places a blueprint, and if you kill him, you get a blueprint schematic for something. <laughs> I think that'd be cool. That was just something I've been wanting to say for ages. And to fill out the segment while I show you the cannibal villages that I don't think have changed. But that's it for all the changes. I'm going to move on to the rest of the patch notes and honorable mentions. Now, as there isn't any spoilers after this one, once I'm done reading, the video is pretty much going to end. There's some decent ones worth mentioning here. Now, as I'm reading, I'm recognizing that a mistake I made earlier, and it's probably going to be too difficult to go back and fix it because it was right at the start. But they've added poison status support to characters. They will lose health and energy and sometimes get injured and stop attacking when poisoned. And multiple poison effects will stack. So they do stack. So if you keep loading up an enemy with the poison arrows it will have an effect i think where i might have not noticed that was because i was using it on the twins and i filled it up with poison arrows and it didn't seem to have much of an effect so it might be more cannibals i don't know we'll have to wait and see 
Next one is that arrows that break a piece of armor will attach to the enemy instead of falling off. I think this is a good one because a lot of the time they're falling underground. They added some randomization to tarp bounces. This is good to stop players getting stuck on it. I think I mentioned this in an update or two ago. Next one is when dismounting the Knight V, you will now re-equip your previous weapon. Another good change. The next one is they've reduced baby attack damage from 15 to 10. I think this is excellent. Babies are really annoying in this game and actually not an enjoyable aspect. None of the traps work on them as far as I know, and their hitboxes are really annoying. I think they should work on a trap that's just for them. That would be nice to see. The animation for the player retrieving their backpack after death has been sped up and shortened. Any change that mentions about speeding up animations, I'm all for, 100%, balls to the wall. The next one is that on sleep interruption players will now sometimes find multiple enemies close by. Be interesting to see how this one pans out. The next one is that masked cannibals will sometimes get out of breath. It's interesting they call them masked cannibals because I'm pretty sure they had a name for it before. The very aggressive one, I can't remember. They got so many names down, struggling to keep up with their names. The next one is a fire status impact on a dead body will now burn to bones. For example, the fire arrows or torch. This is good. That means you could just use a fire stick to burn them. Next one is when muddies eat, it will reduce their anger and make them more likely to ignore the player and now more likely to be distracted by food during combat. Muddies were a real problem at the start of the game. They used to hit like trucks be impossible to kill. They'd run away, they'd dodge attacks. They were the hardest enemies in the game. I don't think they're on a rampage to nerf them. They were bad, very bad. So it's good they're trying to make them less of a problem. The next one is that they set dead stump A break amount to 10. So it breaks in one hit. I think that just might be the little stick tree stumps. I think so. They fixed the case where damaged beams could prevent placing floor planks. Maybe going forward, this might work. I just tested it in my playthrough and because I've got a spot where the beams won't allow floor planks, it didn't work. They added more deer and land turtles to the far side of the map. I find it very interesting that they call it the far side of the map, as in it's not the primary spot of the map. I don't know, I thought it was interesting they call it the far side of the map. Maybe I'm looking into it too much. The next one is that twins will now have an electrocute reaction. And it's good because twins are very good to electrocute. It's one of their weaknesses. So knowing when they're no longer stunned would be pretty nice. And the last one worth mentioning is muddies will now gather to pray to their own effigies that were added in various places around the world and will now prioritize food over everything else, which kind of makes me back up with the one before. But yeah, overall, this is quite a good update. We're getting new content at least once a month, which is really good. Things might slow down over Christmas. I believe they'll probably take time off over Christmas, as will everyone. I'm only guessing. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.